Welcome to our FLIP PLC, where we will be learning how to record lessons and push them out for students to view, creating a classroom that is non-traditional and more a center of collaboration and hands-on learning. Why FLIP? Let's first talk about why we would want to change from traditional to a flipped classroom. There are many reasons and I have summarized just a few. First of all, students will learn content at home and come to class ready to apply their learning. Class time can now be used for activities, hands-on activities, labs, simulations, debates, discussion. Students can now apply their learning that they have learned at home before they come to class. This takes the traditional taking notes out of the classroom and students do it at home, come back ready with this prior knowledge to move on. Let's face it, students are watching things on YouTube nightly anyways. They are used to this format. That's what they live with. When I thought about this for a while, I thought, why not give them something educational? In fact, my daughter, who happens to be a sixth grader at Oregon Trail Middle School, and if you know anything about Oregon Trail Middle School, their demographics are very similar to ours. She is required in her PE class through their health unit to view lessons on Edmodo or read something off of Edmodo and reply directly on there so her teacher knows that um, the students have read the material. So I thought, certainly it's not asking too much for a sophomore or a senior to watch something on YouTube once a week for five to 10 minutes. Naturally, this will create more rigor in your class. What I found was I ended up with about 15 extra days in my semester that allowed me um, to do things in class that I would otherwise not have time to do. Activities, interesting things that the students um, would like to do anyways, but as teachers, we just get bogged down about getting through our, our curriculum. The cool thing about uh, flipped lessons is that students who need some remedial work or need information repeated can have the opportunity to do that alone in their home and they can have it repeated over and over again. The cool thing about that is that they don't have to raise their hand in class when other students might be like, hmm, Joe didn't get that part of the lesson. And so that kind of eliminates um, the spotlight on them um, with instructions. So they can go at home and they can repeat a certain part of the lesson over and over again until they've got it. Now, it's important that you spend plenty of time teaching them how to um, watch your lessons. Show them by modeling how to watch a video. And what I did, which was really easy and really got the ball rolling, is I showed them how to access the video, which I um, push out through Edmodo. And so once I create my videos, I put the link to my video on Edmodo. The students can get to that. And so what I did to begin with is I gave them a handout. And um, we pulled up my video from YouTube or from my Edmodo account, and we watched it together in class. We watched probably the first four minutes together, and I showed them how to follow along and how we could pause and fast forward and rewind and then jot down what we needed to on our follow along guide. Now, for our, um, our group of students at Olathe North, I have had some success with just doing one Edmodo lesson or one flipped lesson a week. I feel like it gives the kids plenty of time to either go to a friend's house if they don't have computer access at home or stay before or after school. Um, potentially gives them one ART to go down to the library and do that as well. Now, make sure that whatever they're completing is meaningful something that you might have them do anyways in class as you are providing instruction. I would also recommend that you have a due date that's typed at the top so they know exactly if it's a week out. Um, it's right there. There's no confusion. And also choose your language. When I first started, um, I was kind of going back and forth between two terms. I was saying Edmodo lesson and I was saying flip lesson. And it kind of confused my kids even though I was talking about the same thing and I knew what I meant in my mind. Um, it wasn't the same thing for them. They were thinking, is it an Edmodo lesson or is it a flipped lesson? So consistency is key. Keep it short. Five to ten minutes is plenty, although Screencast-O-Matic will let you record up to 15. Um, in terms of micromanaging, um, 
I know that some people kind of get caught up in how do I know that they are the ones that are completing the lesson and how do I know they're not cheating um, and really the reality is I don't know if you can tell unless you catch them somehow um, Natalie and I talked about this and for me personally I just let go of that because in all honesty with paper pencil versus a flip lesson on the internet um, probably you know if they're not going to do the lesson they're not going to do the lesson no matter what the format or if they're going to cheat um, they're going to cheat no matter what the format um, trying to micromanage that for me was just a beast that I did not feel I could tackle um, the accountability piece for me is the lessons that they have to complete at home there is a follow-on guide that goes with that and then I expect them to have that done and I use that as background knowledge for for future lessons so there is a little um, piece also that I better do my lesson because then I won't um, I'll know what's going on and I won't be kind of lost in terms of what exactly is she talking about now we're gonna get started um, Natalie and I have downloaded on your computer Screencast-O-Matic and that's what we're going to use it's pretty user-friendly everybody has a microphone or a headset plugged into their computer it's all ready to go we are going to use a uh, a sample lesson that is on the T drive I have made a folder called the flipped classroom PLC folder and in it you are going to find the ON sample flip lesson PowerPoint that you're going to open and you're going to create your video um, we will be saving our videos either to our H drive or to Dropbox or something we will talk about YouTube on it at a different PLC um, and then step four is um, how are we going to push this out to our students now for us today we're just playing around um, but eventually you'll want to figure out are you going to use Edmodo or are you going to use Moodle or are you going to use some other learning management system that will um, kind of house your videos that your students will go to and access them so it's really not necessary for today's activity um, but something just to kind of keep in the back of your mind for later dates now all this flip stuff is um, kind of thinking outside the box and if you're not ready yet that's totally great no no problem you don't need to record today anything you can spend today kind of looking at some resources that Natalie has put together um, for you to kind of peruse and kind of learn and read and research online um, you could also help someone as they record their own lesson um, and you might think too uh, if you're not ready to record your own lesson is there something on YouTube that your students could watch and complete something that you've designed for them to complete um, a KWL or something um, that would you know, kind of give them a little bit of accountability and it would be a great way to kind of test drive what a flip lesson would look like in your classroom so let's go ahead and start with our flip lesson so I'm going to go to the T drive and once I get there I'm going to find the flip classroom PLC folder and in it here we've got the ON sample flipped lesson PowerPoint so I'm going to go ahead and open that up now what you're going to do is if you go to your start button down here you click on that and you want to click on your screencast-o-matic once you do that it will bring up a nice dotted line for you here and um, that is what you kind of want to pull and stretch so that it covers your whole screen now the sample lesson that we have today is simply one over Olathe North kind of a oh, um, non-threatening PowerPoint if you will something that we can all talk about so once we get the PowerPoint pulled up we would hit the red circle would be the record button since I'm already recording I've got a pause button here instead and you just begin scrolling through your PowerPoint so at this point if I hit the button we talk about basic facts and we say Olathe North you know our school colors our mascot Mr. Morford our principal um, a little bit about it, the history which you can talk yourself through that some other information and the end is is thank you and go Eagles now at the end of my lessons what I do is I say um, thank you this concludes lesson seven over political parties or lesson seven over Olathe North now 
once you're done, what you can do is you're going to hit the Done button. Um, and you can see the counter here. I'm at 10 minutes um, out of the 15. I can also pause if I need to and go back. I'd click this red bar and kind of queue it up and then restart. And it would ask me if I want to kind of back up to the point where I'm trying to back up to because I'm going to end up recording over some stuff. And sometimes that happens because I'm not perfect. And, and so I've messed up and I've had to pause and go back and re-record. Um, the other thing is just getting over the sound of your own voice. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hit done and um, show you how to go ahead and save the, uh, the screencast.